Today we're going to show you how to configure VRRP on Juniper devices. So if we have a look at our lab here, we've got a PC with an IP of 192.168.10.10. Its gateway is 192.168.10.1 and that resides on this QFX switch. Then we are going to set up the VRRP on this leg. We have a router A and a router B, both with internet access. And the purpose of the VRRP would be to have router redundancy. So the first portion of this lab is going to be just setting up a VRRP and then the second portion would include setting up root tracking. So what root tracking does is that you can configure it in the VRRP group so that if this router actually loses a root, you can set that up, it will automatically fail over the VRRP group. So in this case we will set up a default route with the next stop of this internet router and we will disable that link to make that route disappear and then you will see that the VRRP will fail over as well. Right, so let's have a look at our configure. We'll just do a show configuration on the switch. There's uh, not much happening here. You'll see that we have a link to the PC in VLAN 10. We have link to router A, link to router B with no additional config there. Then we have the IRB, which is the gateway for the PC and the IRB to, uh, IRB. 10 interface in VLAN 10. Then if we have a look at router A, we do a show configuration here as well. You'll see that we have a link to the QFX also with no config and then just the link to www router one with an IP address on the interface of 10.10.10.2 and then we have a default route 10.10.10.1 which is the internet router connected to router A. Right, if we have a look at router B, let's do a show config again. You'll see we have exactly the same, no config on the interface towards the QFX. Then we have a link to www router 2 which is this router over here. And then we have a static route pointing towards that router for the default route. All right, so we're going to start our config on the switch side. So just to give you an idea, these two devices need to have layer two connectivity between each other for the VRRP to work. And for that, we will use these two interfaces on the switches, XE001 and XE002. So we will form a bridge domain between these two routers and we'll start by configuring these interfaces on the switch. So we go into edit mode and first we'll just create a VLAN. So we configure it as VLAN 100, doesn't really matter, just as long as it's uh, not one of your production VLANs. And we will say VLAN ID 100 as well. And we will insert a layer three interface of IRB.100. Okay, now we will start with the interface config. So we'll say set interfaces XE001, unit zero family ethernet switching, VLAN members, VLAN 100. Uh, VLAN 100 is what we're going to be using for the communication between the routers and the switch. Uh, we're not going to use any tagged VLANs. So if you don't specify interface mode, this becomes an access interface, right? Which is fine for what we want to do. Next, we will do the XE002, set interface as XE002, unit zero family ethernet switching, VLAN members, VLAN 100. Right, so now if we go back to our lab, what you need here is you need an IP address on router A, you need an IP address on router B, you need an IP address on the switch, and then you need a virtual IP for the VRRP. So in total, you would need four IP addresses. So the smallest subnet that we can use for this is a slash 29. Right, so we go back to the switch and remember we used interface IRB.100. So we'll use interface IRB.100 family INET address. And the IP address and subnet I'm going to use here is 172.16.0 slash 29. And the switch I'm going to make dot four, right? So slash 29. Now if we do a commit, this should go through, hopefully. Right, there you go. Now the reason why I used dot four on the switch is because I want to use dot two on router A, dot three on router B, and then dot one as the virtual IP. So we go back to router A, we go edit, and if we have a look at the interface here, the interface connecting to the QFX switch is GE000. So we will start with that. So edit interface is GE000. Because we are using an access port on the switch side, we don't need to do any VLAN tagging here. So we'll just uh, 
use unit is zero. So now what you do is you set the family inet address, so family inet address, 172.16.0.2. So this is the IP address that will reside on the physical interface. And then you will specify VRRP group one. Just remember that the groups need to be the same on both routers. Uh, it can go from group one up until 255, I believe, but uh, we'll we use group one. The next set of interfaces, you can use group two, group three. That is just to separate the priorities and the failovers. Right, and so now we're going to specify the virtual address. And as I said, we're going to use 172.16.0.1, right? So in the year, you don't have to specify the subnet. It'll derive the subnet from, yeah. Right, so we can go one up again so we are still within the vrp group one now we are going to specify a priority so the higher the priority the more likely this router will become the master so we'll use 254 on this one and we'll use 200 on router b right so priority 254 then i will also enable preempt now preempt just means that if router A goes down and the VRP fails over to router B, the moment router A comes online again and the VRP establishes, then router A will take control of the virtual IP. Right, and that's uh, basically it. So we can go ahead and commit that. Now we can just do the same on router B. Once again, it is interface GE000.0. .0. So we'll just set family INET address. And for this one, 172.16.0.3 slash 29. VRP group one, remember they need to stay the same. And we are going to specify the virtual address again, 172.16.0.1. Right, so then the next thing we do is just uh, specify priority. Remember the lower priority becomes backup. So we'll just use priority two, uh, 200, and that is basically it. Right, so now if we go back to the switch or go back to router A first, we'll do a run show VRRP. Right, you can see that this one is master and it is active. It'll show you the local IP and the virtual IP. Now, if you go to router B, you do a run show VRRP, you should see the same, but this one is in backup, right? And you have one additional statement here. It shows you which one is master, right? So that means that our VRRP should be working, right? So if we do a run ping 172.16.0.1, it's not working. So there is one statement that you still need. Um, I excluded that on purpose. You need to specify accept data. Now it is uh, pretty strange, but this basically just enables the VRRP. So what we go is we go back into top edit interfaces, GE000, unit zero, family inet address. Type in the whole thing here again, VRRP group one accept data oh, not yet sorry i'm in edit mode so just press enter and then you can say set accept data All right if we just do a show pop display set yeah this is the command that we just entered okay so i'm just going to copy and paste this it's a pretty long command going to my notepad here it's going to change this one 2.3 because we need to set this on root to b as well so we go top commit and we can go top here yeah, and we just paste that in here. Yeah. Right, so now technically our VRP should now be working. So there you go. So now you are actually pinging the virtual IP. You can ping the individual IPs as well, two and dot three. Now we just need to set up the routing quickly. So edit routing options, static. There's no static routes here. So set root 0 slash 0 next hop 172.16.0.1. Remember, you want to point this to the virtual IP. We can go top and commit. Now we just need to configure the, re the reverse routes on these routers. So top edit routing options static. There's uh, only the default route. Now we just want to add a route back to our PC over here. Right, so it's just going to be set root 192.168.0.0 slash 16. I'm just going to use a slash 16 for this. And next hop, 
we are going to send it to the UFX switch here, right? So this is the IP 172.16.0.4, right? So this one we can actually copy and paste and uh, put it on router B as well. Let's just go ahead and commit. And we do it here, edit routing options, static, paste. Now it's working, right? Just do a commit. And now our routing should be complete, I believe. So run show route. So we have a route to our PC going towards the switch. Then we also have a default route going to the internet routers. Right, so let's uh, see if everything is working as it should. You just go into command and we can ping 8888. Right, yeah, there you go. So ping 8888 is working. I'm just going to run a continuous ping here. I'm going to move this one to that corner over there. So then what we are going to do is just do a run show VRP to determine which one is master. So you'll see that uh, router B is backup. So we go into router A, run show VRP. And this one is the master, right? So we can actually just initiate a failover. So I'm set interfaces GE000, disable. Going to do a commit. I just have a look at the ping here. You will probably lose one or two pings at most. So there's one timeout and now it is resuming. Now if you do a run show VRP, you see this one is in init state and we go to router B, run show VRP, you'll see that this one is now master. So if we go ahead and re-enable this interface, so we'll just do a rollback one, we do a commit and because of the preempt statement, this one should now be master. Right, there you go. So this one is master again. We didn't even lose one ping when this one resumed mastership. And let's just make sure that everything is working as it should. And there you go. This one is back in backup state. Okay, I'm just going to stop the ping here. One nifty thing that I want to show you is root tracking. So we go to edit interfaces GE0, unit 0, family inet address. I know this is a pretty long command. Uh, VRP group one. All right, if we do a show, now I'm going to enable root tracking. So I'm going to say, if we do a run show root, I'm going to say track the root zero slash zero, so the default root. And if this root disappears from the routing table, initiate a VRP failover. Now it's uh, pretty easy to set up this root. So we just go set track root. Right, and we are going to specify the uh, subnet, the IP in the subnet, so zero slash zero. And now you want to specify in which routing table this is. So in our case, it is actually in the default INET table, the global INET. So we are going to specify routing instance default. Right, you have to type it out. And then you're going to assign a priority cost. So what this priority cost means is it will actually deduct whatever you set here from the priority set here. So I'm going to make it uh, 254 so that once that root disappears, we will deduct 254 from this priority, ensuring that this priority becomes zero and the other one will take over mastership. We can actually just make it 55 and this one will then become priority 199 and uh, root B will be priority 200 if we just uh, show display set match VRP. So this one is set to 200. So as long as the priority cost deduction brings this number down to less than what is configured on router B, the VRP will fail over. So I'm just going to, let's make it 200, right? So if we do a show, this is what we've configured. Uh, to make it easier for you, I'll do a show display set. And there you go, that's our full VRRP config, including root tracking. Now in our case, it's not necessary to enable this root track on the router B as well, because we've got the preempt statement. If this VRRP group goes down on this router and it comes back up, this router will take over the VRRP mastership again and the root tracking will continue. If this router is down and the 
router B is master, which would mean that this router is down due to the priorities we set. And then obviously route tracking will not work because there's nothing to fail over to if a route disappears from the routing table. Right, so let's do a I am top, so let's commit that. Now let's uh, make sure we've got all the config committed here. We didn't make any changes to router B, but let's go back to our PC here and we'll do another ping. Right, so the ping is running. I'm going to move this one here. And if we do a run show root zero slash zero, you'll see that it is going to 10.10.10.1 via GE000, oh, sorry, 001.0. So I'm just going to set interface GE001 disable. Right, so we do a commit and have a look at the pings there. There's nation net unreachable and then it continues. Now, if we do a run show VRRP, you'll see that this one moved into the backup state. The reason for that is if we do a run show root, there's no more default root in this routing table. And that is exactly what we set to track. Now, if we just do a rollback one, so for you, those who don't know, if you do a rollback one, it just reverts to the previous config. So if we do a show pipe compare, all I'm doing is I'm removing the disabled statement on GE001. Then let's do a commit. Let's have a look at the ping there. And the ping is not even dropping once. So run show VRP, make sure everything is fine. Router A is master again and run show VRP. Router B is backup. All right, and uh, that's it for this uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you guys in the next one.